grant is from the Department of Defense, the U.S. Army actually. As part of the grant, we're going to deliver uh, to the military uh, five different simulators to help them take care uh, of wounded soldiers doing emergent procedures. What we have here is a physical embodiment of an actual patient, an actual person, and uh, we obtain uh, medical scans through CT and MRI of the human, and then that was created using a 3D printer. So it's totally anatomical. So these are called procedural simulators because they teach medical procedures. So this is kind of a dummy probe, but when you touch, you immediately get a virtual ultrasound image on a screen. They have to be able to use this quickly without uh, thinking too hard about how it, uh, how it works. It has to be very natural, it has to flow very easily. They don't have to work with a whole lot of buttonology. They have to be able to crack this thing open, use it. We're designing it so it can be literally airdropped into the field. We want to use the word turnkey to uh, to describe how fast it can be opened up and used. You have, to, you have to be able to turn it on like a camera. And actually the purpose of the grant is to formally prove that these simulators will actually uh, increase the performance and therefore the safety with which the military medics will deliver care to the wounded uh, uh, warrior. One of the things that you can do with this type of simulation is uh, you can try mistakes because it's not a real person, it's not a real patient. You can think about what would happen if I went too far. What if I pushed the needle in too far? What if I missed this mark? What if I misaligned it? What if I made this mistake? What if I made that mistake? You can't do that on a real person. Our technology has the uh, potential to make those soldiers get safer care faster with less riskful errors so we don't complicate the care, and then also make them more comfortable during transport to the different echelons of care. Mm -hmm.